Well, this is a series of 100 films about Japanese foods that I have eaten, and this is a film about Japanese condiments. Now, one of the things you'll notice immediately when you go to Japan is that the country is noted as this science fiction-y neon concrete world. The actual truth is that Japanese natural scenery is phenomenal and really accessible. Tokyo is a city of 40 million people and the largest city in the world, and yet within 25 minutes from Tokyo City Hall, you can be in the country hiking. Japanese people often think of me, a Canadian, as someone who lives in nature, but the truth is that Japan has a lot of nature too. One of my favorite things in, to do in Japan was to go hiking. A lot of hiking trails are hundreds of years old, and there's so much beautiful scenery, so many high mountains, and so many are accessible by local train. And one of the things people don't understand is that unless you have a car in Canada, you ain't going hiking. Now in Tokyo, it's the eastern part that's the city. More than half of the actual prefecture is forest, in fact, with very few people. And it has some of the most beautiful scenery you'll ever see in the entire country along the Tama River. I found this book. It suggested a route for hiking in a place called Oktama, which was the furthest west place you could go in Tokyo Prefecture. The local train takes about an hour from Shinjuku Station. There's a trail on the side of a peak called Mount Gozen, where from one side you can see Mount Fuji, and on the other side is the entire city of Tokyo sprawled out, 40 million people, and even if it's a cloudy day and the view's obscured, it's still a beautiful train ride to get there. Now the problem was that this hiking book was published in 1990, so since then improvements have been made to the road system and the head of the trail had changed. But I... I didn't know that. So I ended up getting a bus from Oktama Station and walking through an overgrown path that hadn't been trod on in 20 years, and it followed a mountain stream. Now in the stream there was netting, like the kind used to reinforce stones or concrete, but it was laid flat in the river, used to support these branches of green plants growing out of the stream bed. And they look like weeds. And I found out later this is how they grow wasabi. The wasabi plant grows in the river and it has to be held in place, otherwise the current will take it. And at Oktama Station, you can buy all kinds of wasabi-based products, like wasabi mushrooms or wasabi tempura. And generally, Japanese people don't like spicy foods, so wasabi is a bit of an outlier. And originally it was used by sushi chefs to cure the fish slightly before serving it. And with sushi, you also have nori, which is the seaweed paper. And Japan discovered a way to process seaweed, so they created something that holds rice. Soy sauce goes with meat or vegetable dishes, and essentially it's liquid salt. It adds flavor without calories, and that's how Japanese people stay skinny. You know, most Japanese pe people eat smaller, tastier portions, because everything tastes better with salt. Where can I get it? That's right, you guessed it, Oktama Station in Western Tokyo Prefecture. You can buy wasabi souvenirs in the station. If you're new to Japan, you'll probably want to start in Shinjuku Station since it's the busiest train station in the world. Take the Chuo Line to Tachikawa Station. Transfer to the Ome Line for Oktama. Very few through trains go all the way to Oktama except on holiday weekends. The holiday special rapid service decouples from the main Chuo Line train. And if you take the holiday rapid, make sure you're on one of the train cars that goes all the way to Oktama, the last stop. As always, keep in mind that this information may be out of date by the time you're watching this. The word of the day. The word of the day is shitsureishimasu. This is a polite word which is typically translated as please, but it really means pardon me for interrupting you. It's usually only used by staff at a restaurant or when you're a client of a business, so anytime you hear shitsureishimasu, it basically is someone doing something for you, like serving you a beer. Unless you work in sales or hospitality in Japan, you probably won't be using it a whole lot. Uh, however, you will hear it frequently, so it's good to know. As always, feel free to watch this film 10 more times and repeat along with me. At least that's what I'd do. Next time! So that's it until next time when we talk about the war of noodles between Tokyo and Osaka. So until then, sayonara.